Hi, this is Father Barry, day to day with St. Joseph, the year of Joseph. We're uh, on the 27th and 28th of February, and we're following the book. We're going through day by day in the book. And today, the first title is Joseph as Foster Father. So uh, hopefully you read that book and saw that chapter, a couple of pages, and the supplement in the back to read before you uh, came on with me. But Nonetheless, uh, I'm outside here, and uh, I'm just uh, standing near the tabernacle, and uh, we have Joseph standing by, guard, really, the uh, tabernacle of the Blessed Sacrament, and on Fridays, we have the Eucharist uh, here as well, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show that, uh, making the tape on a Friday as well. And, you know, uh, foster father means something to me because uh, I had a dad who was a foster father, but I wasn't the foster kid. Uh, my mom and dad took on three children uh, temporarily, uh, just for a matter of years and a short amount of years, and took in uh, two boys and a girl, first two, two at a time, and then later another child little babe and so I actually could say that like Jesus uh, I had a foster dad living under the roof and uh, my father gave just as much affection to uh, little Bobby and Cindy and Robert Emmett as uh, as he would show to his regular kids and uh, I like that witness I thought that was nice and I thought that my mom and dad were doing a very uh, Nice thing for uh, somebody else's mother that couldn't couldn't be taking care of uh, her child at the time. That was very nice, and uh, helped me appreciate, I guess, the witness of Joseph just a little bit more, because uh, you know he was uh, raising a child that was not his own. Well, I know another a number of fathers that are loving and raising a child that's not necessarily their own of their own seed. Uh, and I appreciate that witness in those people, too. Uh, so I would like to uh, use uh, just a meditation at the tabernacle sometime in this uh, program. And this is a double program because we're covering Saturday and Sunday in this tape. So please don't mind a little extra length today. When the Lord is exposed with the Blessed Sacrament, I think it's uh, so beautiful. And we have a statue of Joseph uh, placed there for our, our uh, whole holy year and next to the tabernacle, but now next to the host that is visible. And, you know, it's uh, fitting because Joseph was beside Jesus uh, physically for many, many years and loving him and attending to him and uh, when we get an opportunity to be close to the Lord in the sacrament love him attend to him uh, it's just very uh, it's a very special moment so I just brought the camera up close here uh, we have about we have about 11 people adoring the sacrament right now in the six o'clock hour So day 13 is foster father of the son of God, pray for us. That's the phrase from the litany of St. Joseph for you to know a little better, okay? And, you know, Joseph is called the legal, the putative, the spiritual, the virginal, and foster father of Jesus, as, as he starts off in this chapter, Father Calloway, okay? And, uh, and the naming of the child, in ancient Jewish custom was the legal responsibility of the father. And St. Albert says, uh, although you, St. Joseph, are not necessarily not necessary for the child's conception and birth, nevertheless, you will be necessary for his sustenance, and your first care will concern his name. He will be called Jesus. Um, we hear about Joseph's dignity as a foster father in this book here, and there's a nice title of him as foster father called Nurturer of the Son of God. It's uh, from a 
an old Latin title of Joseph. Um, and another neat thing is Jesus is referred to as son of Joseph, and he will always be called son of Joseph just because of the placement that he had in this world, in the Holy Family. And so Joseph will be a spiritual father to him and always. And that means there's an appreciation uh, for that fatherhood uh, that Jesus will have for, for Joseph. It'll endure forever. Uh, the back of the book uh, is page 127, The Virginal Father of Jesus. is one of the longest uh, pieces you have to read in the 33 days. And it, because it goes into something of great length about uh, Jesus' family, <clears throat> trying to prove that Joseph was a virginal a virginal saint, and that he stayed that way through his life. And St. Peter Damien says so, as, you saw, as you'll see in that virginal Father of Jesus quote um, on page 127. And then you have St. Bede talking and St. Jerome talking and, and St. Peter Julian Amard speaking and all these quotes about, about Joseph. And in the end, they just want you to recognize that very likely he was a virginal chaste saint and Jesus was the only son to care for. And that's it. And it just lines up to the foster father role. Okay. But I think uh, going back to our start of the tape with <clears throat> being intimate with Jesus, being able to get close, we have Joseph close up to the tabernacle, but he was close to Jesus for years and years, day by day, and now up in the heavens, he is close to Jesus and been for about 2,000 years in a, in a close bodily spiritual intimacy there. And uh, the church had a dogma to Mary for her assumption and a dogma to her perpetual virginity. But as you read in the book here, this, uh, those honors are to Joseph too and uh, just not declare it as must belief for the Catholic. There's just not a whole lot of things written about Joseph as you, we've talked about. Okay, now we're going to go to the next chapter in this book. Hi, we're moving to February 28th in our tape, which will be for day 14 of our Consecration to St. Joseph book. And so I hope you've enjoyed these uh, two weeks so far reading this book. Now, today it falls on a Sunday, the 28th, which is good because this is the meatiest uh, so far, uh, the meatiest part of the book. Uh, the titles of Joseph as Defender of Christ and Joseph as Savior of the Savior, uh, with a small s for his Savior part, and Jesus the big S. Uh, this is uh, going to take a lot of time for you to read and digest. Uh, really, it's, uh, it's so rich. Uh, so, Defender of Christ is uh, today's title of Joseph that is in the Litany of St. Joseph. So he's a defender, obviously, of the young Jesus, the young Messiah, the babe Messiah. Uh, and then, through the ages until now, Joseph has been a a patron and defender of the church. I uh, particularly like it in the National Shrine, that massive apse they have. Uh, besides the big, big image of Christ, there's an image of Mary uh, defeating the dragon on one apse, and then on the opposite apse, on the eastern apse, is Joseph. And he's overlooking the church, and he's holding Christ in his arms. And so he has a defender role there. And the paternal mission of Joseph is not done. He no longer needs to watch over Jesus, but he watches over us, and he shares in the mission of the church. And in fact, he's a model to all men who are supposed to be spiritual fathers in, in their various roles, to step up and, and to do what they're supposed to do. We share in the mission of the church. We are all, in a way, uh, as men, spiritual fathers, meant to defend Mother Church and defend our families, and uh, defend the faith. And I have to say our scorecard isn't uh, too glowing right now in doing that, even in the uh, spiritual fatherhood or the priesthood. 
we have uh, we have shown some weakness, and that's not not good to see that. But Joseph is still watching over us, <clears throat> and uh, he's uh, look he's asking us to look after one another. But the community of saints are are sharing in that role of looking over us, and. Another thing is there's a lot of spiritual combat today, spiritual warfare, and uh, we need a defender, and the church has one, and Joseph, Jesus has given it. When uh, Jesus gave his mother from the cross, we have that in the uh, end of the Gospel of John, don't think that he uh, held back Joseph from us. Uh, he did, and there's lots of saints that have talked about Joseph now as given to us as a defender. Um, and uh, you saw some of those names, especially Blessed William Joseph Chaminade, uh, someone from the French Revolution. And uh, he's the one that came up with that title, Savior of the Savior. I just think a small s is appropriate for Joseph's part. Um, but that he really was a savior. There's no other saint that could quite claim that role. And if you read uh, Matthew 2 and that text of of uh, the angel of the Lord spoke to Joseph, rise, take the child and mother and flee uh, from the destruction of Herod. Uh, Joseph certainly is a defender and a savior of the savior in that moment. And Joseph will be uh, paying close attention to the father and speaking to him as he has the earthly role to raise Jesus. They go to Africa to escape the rage of the deadly king. Uh, there's a great song that, that gives that early story of Jesus and Joseph. It's called My Deliverer by Rich Mullins. Fantastic song. You should see it with the uh, video that goes with it. Uh, so, uh, Jesus would hear the whole world's cry, even as a child, as he's in Africa, uh, for the healing that'll come. And... So, but he's uh, standing by uh, in Africa, and then he's standing by in Nazareth, this Jesus. And uh, it matches a lot of Old Testament stories um, that I just won't get into right now. But Jesus comes out of the refuge, that is Joseph. Uh, and then he comes and he is the deliverer for the world. And he is the savior. But once under the uh, saving protection, of Joseph. This is Father Barry. See you Monday.